How's it going? Steve here on the farm. Wanted to make a mini tour video. Oh, everybody, all my subs on YouTube. So let's start over here. Here we got my one inch predator pump. And, uh, you know, in here we got rainwater. I bring rainwater from my house, my brother's house, a bunch of different places that I have gutters and stuff. And then we collect water on the every roof that we have. So that's how we get uh, our water for the farm because uh, we don't have a well right now. Uh, although we probably will get one at the later part of this year. Um, just waiting on some people, permits and shit. But check it out here we got this uh 12 foot cypress put some shade tarp around it so it's protected a bit the goats don't get at it like yo-yo here this is yo-yo what's up yo-yo say hi to you too that's yo-yo right there that's julie and that's tokayo tokayo's a guy both of them are girls these are bottle fed goats that's why they follow me around what's up tokayo yeah, let me see if you can see my other goats. There's one over there. That's Carita, the herd leader. But uh, let's see if I can spot some other ones. Well, yeah, they're over here. That's uh, Diablo in the back over there. That's my other male. But uh, the other ones don't really follow me because they're not bottle fed. They're mom raised. So that's the one difference. Um, the goats don't really mess with the agaves and cactus but any trees and stuff i do have to kind of like tarp them because they freaking love them because i give them a diverse diet so a lot of the times they're eating alfalfa then they're eating gardening landscaping tree waste uh and then gardeners landscapers utility people bring me that stuff so you know they have a really diverse diet but back to the cypress tree i got this bad boy for 120 uh or 150 in a 24 gal at my friend's nursery evergreen nursery here in palmdale we're in lancaster but it's really close to us and he's got really good prices on plants i bought a bunch of agave five gals for 10 bucks each off him they're usually 15 but i bought a bunch he's got five gal olives that we're gonna pick up pretty soon like we're gonna plant all the way over there uh so we've got irrigation on five acres and we're gonna put an acre of olives way back there and we're gonna buy those off him pretty soon so that's uh one plan there but this shade tarp you know we just hammer in eight foot treated stakes uh two feet in um with the post driver and then use the makita stapler to get shade tarp on there all the compost around the plants is come in mulchy. I call it mulchy compost because it's not really compost. It's kind of like all the shit we're giving the goats and the birds and stuff. Then they eat it and are pooping on it and everything. And it turns into kind of semi-compost, but it's still mulch. So I call it mulchy compost. That's what we add to all of our trees. Agaves, everything to retain moisture, boost the soil profile. Um, what else does it do? Let's see. Uh... You know, it keeps the weeds down. It keeps all the, you know, ground cover down. Just uh, wildflowers will grow. So over here, we got an olive tree. We got a uh, manzanillo 24 gal that we planted in here. It's 120 for my homie's nursery. It's pretty good because these trees could be like triple, quadruple over there in the LA area. It's pretty fucked. But, um, you know, we still haven't got the stakes out of here. We put these shade tarps up recently. We're going to get these stakes out and then probably just leave two so it can grow straight but um you know for the most part the shade tarp is now protecting it you see same thing as the cypress put these up pretty quickly that's why i like them they could take the wind pretty well we get like 50 60 even 70 mile per hour winds and they've maintained pretty well so it's like a cheap way to do it you know like these stakes are six bucks right so it's like 24 bucks and then a fucking 10 bucks a shade cloth and then it takes me like five minutes so i could throw up uh, protection from the wind the frost the sun a little bit of everything relatively quickly and cheaply affordably so over here we're gonna have an outdoor kitchen area kind of excavating but it's taken a long time so it's just fucked but this year we're trying to do much more projects so 
hopefully we'll build an outdoor kitchen but over here we got an outdoor fireplace and fire ring seating area um, we're gonna still cover all of this with stucco leave that natural clean it up then fill this in and then clean it up so still got a lot of work to do on this one as well but you you could start to see the form right it's, it's going check out the goats they're all over here they love running on this ring you know i don't know why but they do the baby goats are now all friends but the mom goat over there carita she hates my baby goats the bottle fed goats i don't know why probably because she's a herd leader but all the other ones are chill with them well actually the other mom juanita sometimes fucks with them but not much so let me show you some of the plants over here we got agave americana variegata same with this one picked up a bunch of these from different nurseries in palmdale lancaster la what we're trying to do with a lot of the agaves is create spirits we sell the plants pups uh we sell uh, seeds and uh, with the spirits what we're trying to do if you remember from the last vid is create a unique california agave spirit um, based on the traditions of tequila and mezcal so i'm from jalisco mexico born um, in aulusco del mercado pretty close to the city of tequila and uh over there in tequila you know that's where a lot of the tequila most of it's made in the world in that region but different regions in mexico can grow tequila uh or or produce it and uh, different regions can also produce mezcal uh boca negra uh sotol different agave spirits right ricea is now gaining popularity um, and most of those use one to three different agaves so you know if you know a little bit about combinations and permutations from mathematics um, here we have over 60 different agave species that are distillable that are going to all grow large uh larger than the techie liana um and we're gonna be you know distilling them and producing spirits from them so we're gonna have over thousands of possibilities of different spirits uh that are going to be unique california spirits uh that hopefully will become world-renowned spirits and you know hold their own uh, we're not trying to compete with tequila we're trying to create a new industry here in california because we're not going to be able to call it tequila um or mezcal right because those are region denominated um all of those ones i mentioned are all region denominated so we're fucked on that sense but these can grow in california so we need to create the industry here i know i'm not the first i've heard of maybe half a dozen companies doing it but none of them are mexican <laughs> and none of them are from jalisco so you know i heard i've heard of a guy up in norcal he's got the funds but you know the guy running his op is from jalisco so that guy is like one of the best i've seen but not many are doing it well you know from what i've seen so hopefully you know in like a uh, couple years we're gonna be able to produce a lot of this shit we've produced um what do you call it uh 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 what the fuck that shit the name is is lost me um so we've produced like our own agave spirits like you know in the same form of tequila and mezcal but they're not agave and mezcal right because they were produced here um and then i forget the name of the drink um you know that they call oh pulque so we've produced pulque and then we've drank naturally from large agaves, um, you know, aguamiel. So we're already producing the agave spirits and different products from them. We want to produce agave syrup, um, you know, a lot of these different things. Uh, but my point is, I've already proven that we could do it, right? It just... Uh, I didn't have a lot of them. So like a lot of these agaves, I'm bringing them from people's homes. Like this one I brought and it was small and then it's grown here. But my point is like, check out, let me see if I can zoom in over there. Google Zoom or Samsung Zoom. So those three I just bought, right? They came recycled from a home and within like just a couple years, they'll be distillable, right? Or able to be distilled. 
So I'm not having to wait to grow a lot of these agaves because I'm taking them out for free from people's homes or buying them for cheap from people that are doing that. And I'm able to distill and produce, uh, you know, pulque. I've been getting drunk as fuck off the pulque. But uh, the agave spirits, I haven't really produced much. I produced like 10 bottles and uh, pretty much threw a party and got fucked up off on all. But we need to make more, you know. I think uh, those over there are probably going to be the soonest ones, maybe three years now. But like I said, if I can get a giant one, you know, I put it out here in a year, it, it starts to be ready to be distilled. We fucking made it, you know, so uh, stay tuned on that front, right? So more agave, uh, very Americana variegated. A lot of the other one that we got is agave Americana, um, just the, the regular and then a bunch of hybrids of it. Um, you know, different versions of it take the cold better. Um, these agave Americana hybrids. The, the best one that I have out here is like the Azul. And that one's like a California um, nursery made its own like agave Americana hybrid. And that's that one. And it's fucking amazing. I don't know what it is, but it's crazy. So over here we got the artichoke agaves. These do freaking amazing. This is one of the best ones that I have out here. So like I tripled down on them. I bought like 40 of these like two weeks ago and i planted them and they're all doing well so i'm happy about that one that's the thing out here i was trying to tell you guys last video right like you plant one it's doing freaking amazing now you can trust yourself you know like like say it takes the snow it takes the 120 fahrenheit it takes the the 50 mile per hour winds it, it's getting fucking murked right well you know if it does well you can go buy a hundred of them and do more of it right like the golden barrel cacti, I'm starting to do that with it. The, every single agave I'm doing well with, I'm getting a hundred of them, right? So um, that's kind of what I'm doing. A lot of the fruit trees I had in the last video uh, that were like over here, like figs and kind of like smaller stuff. Um, and then I had a, a, a nopales and different cactus over here. I sold them all to a different nursery. The same with the pitayas that were all over there because they weren't doing so well, the species that I had. And there's different slight variations of those same species that I bought and are doing way fucking better. You know what I mean? So I just sold all those to a farmer, made some money, and funded buying agaves and other stuff that do way better out here. So, you know, that's something you can do too. Um, but another thing is during Corona, um, you know, the the at the beginning of it, uh we got kind of screwed because of uh you know not being able to move so easily and then some of our trees died so that's you know if you're wondering about the, those plants that's what happened <laughs> so here we have buckets if you see around the farm tons of buckets right what's up with the buckets all the buckets are protecting baby plants right and they're able to protect the baby plants really freaking well let me see if i can show you one of the ones right like you could put a little like that's like a th two three inch plant and wouldn't make it outside because of the wind the cold the, the, but it's already grown like double or triple because of the pot right so i just cut the bottom of five or 15s or 24s whichever's i got that i plant from gardening and landscaping trees and then i recycle them oh shit this guy's already outgrown the pot so see this one was getting murked by a jackrabbit and then i put the pot and then um you know, now he's fine, and he's actually growing out of the pot. I might have to get a bigger pot for him. So I just secure these with staples or dirt around it. You don't have to do much, you know. Just secure it so the wind doesn't go uh, away from it. But another thing about the jackrabbits and the stupid uh, rodents, right? Now that I have the goats and now that I have all the birds, no more plants are getting marked. I got to worry about them. They might eat a plant, but I could train them. I can't train some wild animal, you get me? Like, so now, like all these wildflowers, they're foraging on them and I'm training them to eat that. They go away from the plants, keeps my uh, maintenance down. I don't got to weed whack or tractor this stuff. So it's it's helping everybody, right? And they're pooping everywhere, like, and, and just uh, leaving uh, fertilizer everywhere, right? Like, um, there's not, you know, they haven't been over here much, but uh, let me see if I can find some. Hmm, 
not much not much but the point is they're pooping everywhere right like over there is where they like more i'll show you a bunch of see look right here a bunch of poop right from the goats and then you know the geese and stuff uh but anyways buy the plants they get the fertilizer they get all that stuff in their soil right now it's uh you know two weeks away from spring we didn't get a super bloom but we are getting a bunch of yellowing you know i don't know if you could tell but you know it's maybe five percent of a super bloom so they're getting lots of cool forage they love the wildflowers this is the first year i have animals on the farm so i'm glad that they're able to help me keep everything down and forage and have fun and, you know it's dope the animals really made everything full circle ¿Qué pasa? <laughs> they just be running around but yeah it made everything come full circle because i don't need to buy fertilizer compost mulch anymore um all the shit i was throwing away to the dump i don't pay those fees anymore i give it to all my animals a bunch of my friends are doing that now they bring that shit here for me for free so then i don't have to buy a bunch of feed um like everything is just clicking man fucking clicking that's why i tell you know like uh you know people on my ig and pinterest like you got to make those connections with your buddies you know don't look at them as competition but i need to tell you guys that shit more too on youtube so then check this one out too this is a cool one this agave i, I forget what it is i don't know if it's an artichoke uh agave but it's something similar to that and it's freaking doing really well it was like this big it's grown in this pot baby yeah so a lot of these are agave americanas this one i got for cheap took it out of house i think it's a rough spine agave hey no eating agaves that's how you gotta try that tell them no 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 come on come on me come on me babies we got more variegated more very rough spines americanas hey no 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 come on follow daddy yeah goats sometimes you know though They'll prick them, but good thing these agaves and cacti have little compounds that make them not want to eat them. It's actually why they don't eat the crescent out there. Like all that shit, they don't eat it because, um, well, all the stuff that grows around the crescent, yeah, but they don't eat the crescent because it's got like little resin compounds that fuck with them once they eat like a couple of leaves. So right here, we got a Mexican saguaro fruiting cactus. Those are really good. More rough spined, I think. Uh, more fruiting saguaro. These fruiting saguaros produce a freaking amazing fruit. Kind of like, it tastes like a kiwi or a mango. They grow amazing out here. Nobody's commercialized them, which is stupid. Home Depot has a bunch of them. So I'm just buying Home Depot's whole stock every time I go and planting a bunch of them. More Americanas. What we'll do with a lot of the little shrubs that are growing like this that aren't crisote, we'll let them grow naturally so the, so the goats eat them. We don't cut them back anymore. So that's helpful. You know, it, it helps everybody. And then all the alfalfa that they spill from any, any places that they have alfalfa, like I put alfalfa over there by the shed uh, and the ATV. Let me see if I can zoom in over there. It's over there, right? And then I got some over here by this pen. And then I got alfalfa here. And, um, you know, that's way, that way they're moving around and shit. The one I have on the wheelbarrow by the shed, I'll move super far sometimes so they have to look for it. But anything that falls on the ground, I'll scoot over to some plants and it could be some mulch, you know. So that's their little feed area. Over here we got the stone cabin, haven't finished it yet. Um, but what that's going to be is just like a little small room, like a tiny house on the bottom. So I could just kick it, have a studio to, um, relax and, you know, retreat to. And then it's going to have like a, kind of like a middle from here to here for just sleeping. And the top is going to be like, uh, just a, a deck so I could see the sunset, the sunrise, all that stuff. And then, um, you know, it'll, it'll be a real nice, uh, project. It's just taking me a while you know, because I really want it to be artsy. I don't want it to be just some freaking stone cabin, basic ass shit. Like, you know, like I, I used, I was pretty good when I started this stuff at, you know, like, look at this, it's pretty nice. But let me show you how it's coming out over on the other side as I've laid over 200 freaking tons of stone. We've gotten better at this shit. Look at that, look at that, look at that. 
Mmm. Mmm. Fire, right? So, little by little, we're crafting it to be better. My outer walls now are going to be like that, now that I've mastered a bit more. I'm not a master mason, can't say that shit, but I've bettered myself and I've improved. Nobody taught me how to do this, and, uh, you know, now you could crash a semi into this shit because I have to do multi-walls to make it nicer now, and uh, none will happen. <laughs> So I'm making it stronger and it's nice and cool in there because it's super thick walls. It's like a two foot, no, no, not even, it's like a five feet of wall, dude, you know? Because I built this wall, didn't like it, and then I built this wall and I liked it. So that's, you know, well, not five feet, right? It's maybe three feet. Like, look at this wall, it's fucking ugly. I got to make it super nice, right? Little by little, we're working on it. This is some uh, mulch my homie Keith brought me, mulched it up. Uh, or cut it up and stuff, all those other crap of it, the leaves, I put it over there, gave it to the goats, agaves, soil. Over here, we're building a goat barn, working on it little by little. We got some number six rebars here. We got a one foot deep foundation, one foot wide. Uh, I think it's like 16 or 18 feet right there. And then the same here, same there. And then we're going to come out with little four here and then build a nice little barn door and then that's going to be another goat pen let me show you the current goat pen over here it collects water as well off the gutters goes into these water totes a bunch of them are full pretty chill oh well, this is the goat pen i built with a bunch of recycled wood this is where i recycle my uh what do you call it my cans and stuff got a little chipper it broke but that's how we broke down a lot of the stuff at the initial um i built a bamboo feeder for the goats it's recycled from gardening waste the bamboos and then all this gardening landscaping trees i put it in here they eat it all and i put fruit and all that stuff i get from the schools i get like uh just like i got a whole truck right now of boxes of fruit that the school the kids don't eat it i put it in here break it down for them they eat that they eat the waste and then they eat off alpha. So they got the freaking craziest diverse diet. They eat better than me. So I put water in here so the babies can reach it. Water in there so the everybody else can reach it. The moms. The babies like to sleep under here. For some reason, I don't know. I didn't do that on purpose, but they like to. We clean the pen every week. We put in these feeders corn so they go in at night. It's just recycled rain gutters. Just put two screws on the wall, boom, boom. The walls, as you can see, is all pieces of shit I've recycled. Wood, TGIs from construction, fence boards that I cut a bit. These are also fence boards that were from another fence. And the same thing on the bottom we secured with steel mesh and wood from other places. All this we just secured with recycled fencing, staples, um this shit we had at the house you know we try not to spend anything pretty macgyver about that stuff the roof we bought the shingles that's the only shit that was new yeah and you know like nobody really like i used to help my dad when i was little nobody taught me roofing but i mean i learned like now i know the fucking drip edges gotta go first so <laughs> if you're doing your own roof you put the drip edges first then the fucking shingles to be a dumbass but you know that's how you learn when nobody fucking can teach you you do you build it yourself you fuck it up you realize it be proud of it and you redo it you know what i mean um you guys know how it is if you're following me you know what's up uh but yeah we collect rainwater in here we pump it in here all all for the farm so you can have it here are the geese lucy and ricky what's up lucy and ricky say hi to youtube that's Lucy and Ricky. This is how we get the uh, water the whole farm at once. We got uh, PVC piping going under the whole farm, drip line above ground for the five acres, right? We uh, can pump from one of these water totes uh, with this thing. We'll put it in there, uh, the hose, and then we'll turn the pump on. It's a three inch, and then we could send it down into uh, the three inch, two inch, and one inch PVC piping that's all underground. And then I separate the farm into two. 
if I need to turn one spot off, you know, I can. And uh, I built all that myself too. We're irrigators, landscapers. That actually was one thing we built out fucking amazing because we do consulting and farm uh, build outs for irrigation. So this is the first time we actually got to do it for ourselves. So, you know, we had a lot of years of knowledge of building other people's larger farms and on a small scale, it was a little difficult to be honest because like, the smallest farm we were building irrigation for was like 40 acres so like building a five acre irrigation a little different but you know nothing we couldn't do right wow the wildflowers are looking nice look at that oh check out that bee box forgot to tell you about that i'm gonna bring some bees over that are in a column at my brother's house put them in there one of the top boxes i have over there so then all these hoses is just irrigation building some more irrigation valve stuff this is how I bring the water, right? So it'll go from three to two to one inch PVC and then come up, pop up. And then I'll have a stop valve. And then from here, I can put my drip line pieces. Let me see, I got another one over here I can show you. This is my little shed. I have a couple built. Yeah, yeah. So this is how we'll have it. We'll have a cover with drip tape so no cold will screw up the pipes. Then out of here, we'll have a half inch pee, uh, drip line going out and then another stop. So then I can easily add on to all these systems. And then this, you know, each one of these could run me around 200 feet of drip line. So that's pretty much my pressure with that pump. Concrete mixer. Oh, let me show you the little shed, right? It's, uh, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty good built. Once again, this is the first time I build stuff like this, so don't judge me. <laughs> so, like, what I would improve in here is, like, a bunch of this shit. Like, I would do that differently. Um, you know, the nails, I bought them too long, sunk them too deep. Um, the shelving came out nice. I built that. Really cool shelving, you know? Bones. <laughs> so, all that shelving, I got all my camping gear, tools chargers uh coffee maker radio everything i need to run the farm augers and this auger is the best one electric auger hey yo yo don't mess with the ducklings check out these little, little ducklings just got those like two weeks ago they're pretty cool um so let's see in the shed we just store like you know all our essentials we got water goat uh, feed gas uh lights so we could work at night um little fireplace and stove uh yeah just tools and shit you know nothing really important in here uh but like i said the shed i built myself and i would have done a bunch of shit differently um like these windows are put fucking sideways like you know they should be like that but little things you know you learn so like the wind messes up the shed on this side because we get like 70 mile an hour winds i'm gonna redo that whole thing this year but check out the gutters that's how they collect water you know um let's see if i can get up on my atv and show you the roofing that's the roofing i built that shit myself too with recycled roofing actually that's why it's two colors these little balls I bought so it airs out the shed and pretty much the water falls, goes into the gutter, drops down, goes into the tote and I can use it for watering and shit. They have access down there too. Some of them, uh, not all of them, I haven't built it out for all of them because some of these are recycled and they're not so good. Like this one over here, I don't have water in it because it drips and it's broken from the bottom spigot. So I gotta fucking get a new one. Check out this Palo Verde, it looks dead but it's you know uh transplanted recently from another garden in la so it looks like shit but it's alive uh some octopus agaves over here look at this serious cactus this guy took snow and everything zero fucks zero fucks really good cactus for the mojave what's up geesey what's up geesey some of these blue series do well too out here but probably need to cover them that's what i learned but, like, all the pieces that didn't get, you know, touched by the wind, they're chilling. So, that's what I'm say. Probably got to cover them. We got some agave, macrocanta, the black spine agave. Those do really well out here. That's a, a young one. That's another one you got to tarp in winter. Same with the octopuses. I'm learning 
I'm learning. Uh, the octopuses, you, you got a tarp uh, just with a small shade cloth like this in winter, and they're chilling. Um, over here, we got a blue eucalyptus I bought from just a roadside stand here in uh, Lancaster. Also protected with shade. I'm going to water that today. Blue eucalyptus, fire, uh, you know, uh, loves this tree, but... We're trimmers, tree trimmers and gardeners, so we're going to keep it really maintained. And the goats don't eat that, so we're going to have to mulch the crap out of it, turn it into waste with a mulcher later. So just going to use it for windbreak stuff for now. But um, I just really love that tree. That's, I don't see why I have it. Um, yeah, the octopuses, as you can see, they got brown tips. So that's from the, the snow. But they won't die. Right now it's about a get into spring and they're gonna freaking spring up and they'll be like Poof, look amazing right look at this shitty bench i built once again learning how to build you know not super shitty actually this one it actually has lasted for years it just i don't like the design <laughs> so check out this little mini greenhouse i built recently hey it already withstanded a 70 mile per hour wind check it out now we're protecting everything this is recent this is like three weeks old um so we got another palo verde in there that we got for free client brought it out here we got mexican saguaros golden barrels those are fruiting we got artichoke agaves uh philly farrow agaves octopus agaves some of these are you know i didn't water them and then they got fucked from the snow so once again don't judge me i'm trying to fucking learn like look at that agave right doing amazing it's just you know, when I'm on my shit, they do amazing. So this year we've been on our shit. Last year we got kind of marked a bit. But um, the Parviflora back there, you know, all those are distillable agaves. And some of these native Arizona agaves, like the Parviflora, really, really freaking interest me. Look up uh, Hohokam agave, uh, agave production uh, on YouTube. And you'll see that a lot of the Native Americans were just like the, my, my people, man, like the Holly Skenses distilling agaves but they focused on baby agaves and they produced hundreds of thousands of them and got wasted off them but you know like i'm trying to figure out you know what type of spirits we can make with them so you know maybe i gotta meet some hoho cum people man but um yeah more of that stuff in here more of that stuff let me get over to the other side see anything in there what's up in there yeah a little baby oh shit the kichio con lived that's what i'm talking about man you get a little uh bucket kichio con lived man that shit definitely won't live outside its first few years in the snow so check it out the octopus is looking much better over here these are more recent ones i've taken better care of but we just try to mulch everything around that we cut down uh put it around them pretty uh chop and drop about it like check out this agave chop and drop the crap out of it uh stuff around it that we give to the goats put it here so check out the farm here low overview so we got lots of agaves we got a dracenia in the back there these uh echino cactus polycephuses we got hundreds of them i think maybe under a thousand some Joshua trees, agave americanas, octopuses doing freaking amazing. So all those are distillable or fruiting. Um, the Echino cactus polycephus doesn't give, uh, well, it gives a fruit, but it's not eatable. Um, my whole thing with that is like people were freaking taking truckloads of them and jacking them from my land. Like I have hundreds of acres and this is like, you know, I can only manage so much. So I'm working on five, right? But um, people had been jacking them, and I had been, you know, having to go basically at gunpoint to try to stop them. So I got tired of doing that. You know, it's real risky trying to risk your life for a cactus that people, you know, they're, they're selling for a lot of money. So um, essentially what I did is brought as many as I could that are around the roads and easy access uh, on my lands. I made sure by GPS they were on my land, by the way. Don't just fucking go take shit and try to... Oh, I'm gonna save it. Nah, they gotta be yours. And I brought them all here because I was like, well, if somebody's gonna freaking 
uh, you know, already go and steal them. I might as well move them here and have them under my watch. So, you know, I've sold a couple small ones that people have given me, never one of mine. Um, you know, and those have come from greenhouses, like for instance, like these guys over here, narcs, uh, you know, I don't know what their deal is. They're growing a uh, bud or something, not sure, but they gave me a bunch of agaves. They're chill, chill people. And, uh, you know, it's funny, like the cops stop by there all the time and nothing ever happens. So I'm sure, you know, they know about them, but I guess nobody cares. But with the cactuses, uh, you know, I, I'm friends with them and they gave me a couple of them because, you know, they were throwing them away when they were bulldozing. And I'm like, oh, give them to me and I can sell them. So I still got a couple of them over there. And uh, those I, I have sold, but I stopped selling them because I don't want to fucking promote the consumption of this agave by poachers. Um, so now I've sold 3,000 seeds this year, and I'm trying to just sell a bunch of the seeds from it. So that's kind of my role with that, because I'm tired of people just stealing them um, and poaching them. So instead of having, um, you know, somebody sell a hundred of them that they poached, I want them, people to grow millions of them through the nurseries and do what they did with the golden barrel cacti. Make it, um, people stop poaching them because... They're freaking everywhere, and you can buy them so relatively easily. So that's my goal with this. But, um, you know, I, I'm almost running out of seeds. So it's good and bad. Bad because I don't have more seeds to give to people to grow them, and then people will want to poach them. But good because people are growing them, and soon there will be thousands of little baby etchino cactus that people could buy, hopefully, from those people. Um, or from those growers. So, yeah. God's watching, hook them up. <laughs> but yeah, check out a bunch of these, you know, triples. I love uh, my Echinoa cactus, so I, I've, I got them under my watch now. Motherfuckers aren't gonna steal them. Now. We've got a, a lot of protection here at the ranch. People are always here. <clears throat> so we got the, more octopuses, more Echinoa cactus. Octo, uh, octopus. Oh, look at this one. This one's doing really well. Woo! Once again, Jackrabbit was screwing me. Not no more. Woo, look at the new stuff. Baby, you're doing well. You're doing well. I'm gonna make some bomb stuff out of you. But one surprise, honestly, I didn't ever think this shit was gonna live. I got this from like an indoor client. <clears throat> She's like throwing it away, right? And I'm like, ah, fuck it. Just take it to the ranch. Let's see if it lives. It lived. Bro, it got a, it got like inches of snow on it. It got a 120 Fahrenheit. Nada, nada. It's out here fucking doing better than it was at my house. I don't even get it. You're, a, you're an amazing plant, huh? You're gonna, you're gonna kill it, huh? I'm gonna give you, uh, I'm gonna give you some water, huh? Later, huh? So check it out. This is the drip. It comes from the underground, pops up, sends a bunch of water. Waters all these fuckers. Agaves, cactus, all that stuff, right? And then we got more lines over here. Goes this way. Waters all those fools. You know, that's how that works. If you want a video, maybe more. I don't want this to be like a fucking two hour video. <laughs> Sorry, you know, I, I go on a lot of tangents, but I'm trying to teach you guys a lot of stuff too. But um, if you want a close up video on the drip line or how to build this shit, let me know. I'll. I guess I'll I'll do that, you know. That's another thing. If you guys know something that you want, let me know. I'll fucking film it, right? Like somebody said, hey, it's been a while from no farms uh, tours. And I'm like, you know what? you fucking right. Let's make a fucking farm vid. So you guys, you know, sometimes like I don't know what content to make, you know, like fucking let me know if there's something you want and I'm on it. So these wildflowers, the yellow ones, I'm glad that the goats are eating them because they're fucking invasive. Um, but the other thing is they're eating the phasalias, which aren't invasive. And that's why there's a wildflower sanctuary over here. All this should be purple, man. But it's yellow because of the fucking mustard. I don't know what this wildflower, mustard wildflower, I guess that's what it's called. It, uh, you know, it just takes over. It's beautiful. I don't mind it. Great forage love it for pictures but shitty ass i guess because i love the facility it smells beautiful 
Uh, if I spot one, I'll, I'll show you guys. Check out these Caribbean agave. Got fucking murked. I think if I tarp those, they would live though. So that's that's another experiment I'm trying. Aloes for sure. You gotta have them in a greenhouse. They're gonna get murked. We got more rough leafed agaves. You can see how the drip lines all through here. Mente yo yo. So yeah, we we just got right now about like two acres, two and a half acres of agaves, cactus, fruit trees. Um, that's what the permaculture farm is right now. And then we got about, let's see, nine goats, 12 chickens. Let's see, like eight ducks or something like that. And then like, uh, like 10, 11 quail. Just, man, it's just fucking getting ridiculous. But it's all good. <laughs> I just, you know, I've lost count. Um, this is another one. Now that I'm, you know, have, hasn't been getting marked by the jackrabbit. I'm probably going to have to take this branch out and that branch out and that branch. But these two, it looks like it made it. Look at just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that little guy in there. You know, the garambuyo. This is a commercialized fruiting cactus in Querétaro, I think different areas around mexico but you know it's like a little looks like a little baby cherry you know what i mean looks like a baby cherry and then like that little baby cherry fucking uh you know produces like or that fruit is so good oh my god you know let's see uh where the fuck uh i forgot where i was going oh, okay let's see we got some more cholas. You know, jackrabbit was just murking them. That's why out when they were outside, that's why I transplanted them here. Now they're growing a little bit better. Same with like honestly, everything was getting murked. Like the jackrabbit was eating all everything, man. And uh, the bossy lars, like the beaver tail cactus, he was murking all of them too. And I'm like, what the hell? And then uh, octopus agaves, more echino cactus, Joshua's. Um, we put some, uh, what was that shit? Fucking a little shrub for that. It's like not native to here, but it's uh, oleander. They live out here too. They just die back in the winter and they'll come back in the spring. So. Check out my post driver. Boom, boom. More irrigations. This is how everything comes out for over here. See, this is a little better example. You can see the two inch pipe there. This was a, a earlier example, right? Over there, that was a way better <laughs> version. And the, even this is kind of shitty, right? Because it's all coming from one. If I, I got to make this into five so it distributes the water better. But we're all learning, once again. Um, see, better example of mulchy compost over here on these agaves. But check it out. We got this little mini greenhouse we built here, too. Um, it got taken down. That's why we put thicker posts here. So if it goes with the the 70 mile an hour winds, which come from east to, no, no, west to east, uh, you can build it with those cheap stakes and it's fine. But you have to use thicker stakes if you put it against the wind because it'll fall and fuck your shit up like it did to me. Like, see, look, broke there, you know, broke here. Every post fucking broke, essentially. I had to cut them all down and fucking re-put them and then add thicker posts. So then uh, how I get in here is I just got a little fucking bucket and then I boom, boom, you know. So we got octopus gavas, artichoke gavas, trying not to step on them. Let's see, parviflora's. We got uh, what is that one? That motherfucker. What is he? Uh, that's a uh long spine agave. Long spine. Yeah. And then uh, more artichoke parviflora. It's hard to see them, right? Cause look at the compost, but they're growing amazing. Um, filiferas. That's how we attach it, right? Just fucking staples. Bada bing. These don't get murked if they go against the wind. But you gotta cut them. They're not even meant for this. They're like horse, horse posts or some shit, right? Like, uh, like these are garden fence posts or garden tree stake, whatever post. And then uh, these are for for horses. But I just cut a V in them. I I use my my sawzall or my fucking uh my whatever machine and fucking cut and then you could just go boom boom two cuts you make a v and then just hammer it in with the post driver but those are hard as fuck man they take like like these you can hammer in in like 
10 15 seconds this shit takes like two minutes it's tough but that's why they don't move hard to go in hard to go out <laughs> so here we got an agave americana azul that was the one i was telling you he's doing the best look how cool this fucker is man he's already grown a bunch of big pups i don't know what how, how they hybridize this one but man this whatever they mix that agave americana with is doing freaking amazing man um and that's the other thing too now that i got like Dozens and dozens. Que pasa? Que pasa, Julie? Vete para acá. be crying and shit when they don't see me. So, um, what was I saying? Um, so the agave americana azul, um, it's a hybrid. So I'm gonna have hundreds of hybrids because they're all gonna be seeding a bunch of them. I'm gonna not create them all into spirits, right? And uh, I'm gonna be letting some of them flowers pollinate with each other right and there's so much wind and i'm gonna hand pollinate we're gonna create a bunch of cool varieties but that's probably i won't get rich off that probably my kids will or some shit i don't have any kids but that's probably 20 years out right the hybrids take forever but yeah that's the end of the little mini greenhouse like i said i put this one up for like super cheap because of the just quickness the, the cheapness of the post and uh i put it up this greenhouse for like about a thousand and i put it up in like an hour and a half <laughs> so i mean you know that greenhouse or it wasn't a greenhouse it used to be a greenhouse and i built it into a chicken coop and i tear down the whole building and to rebuild the chicken coop it took me like a week or two weeks so it's like you know when you could put it up fast like this and it could withstand extremes that's some good shit man that's some good shit so check it out, but blue serious, like I was saying. Do you tarp this? It would do well. It just the snow, man, look at the little top, right? But once again, saved by the pot a bit. Let me show you another blue serious over here. Look at this blue serious. <whistles> that one is a Peruvian apple cactus monstrose mutation. I call it the blue monstros because it's just, pew. there's a green monstros and then there's a blue monstros and the blue one, I love blue, so it just looks so good. This is another fruiting uh, cactus that just produces an amazing fruit. I freaking love it, you know? Um, all right, this vid is probably gonna be two hours. I'm gonna just, not even gonna lie. I'll make two parts. <laughs> but it's been uh, two years, right? So fuck man, an hour for every year, right? That's what we could do more octopus filifera agave azul agave americana these are more recent you can see the ghost been trying to fucking murk some gotta fucking regañarlos gotta get mad at them but no it's just the babies you know so it's fine if they prick a bit of it I don't mind I'll train them by the time they you know would kill one <laughs> Look at these. These are older ones that they were just getting murked by the jackrabbits. So it's like now I'm trying to just save them water more. Um, these are some of the yellow metronome cactus mutation. So I gotta go show you. I got a whole, a whole other one that's uh, the Echino cactus polycephus zeramides, and that's like even more rare than the the this barrel cactus, the the original Echino cactus polycephus which is a red barrel cactus um, and they both produce fruit both produce seeds but the yellow one is like for every red that you find or for every 500 reds that you find you'll see one gold so it's like a i don't know if it's like a nature mutation or some shit that somebody did i don't know but uh you know they're way more rare so check it out got some more azules check out the goat bite Ooh, pobre agave. It's all right, buddy. You'll, it's your outer leaf. <laughs> now buff up. Buff up, buck. And we got more rust spines. Artichokes. What's this one called? La Fanta, I think. I forget. All these, once again, you know, for sale. Seed, plants, pups. All of that. <whistles> it's looking good right here. Look at these, uh some of these older ones most of these that look kind of crappy they all came from people's homes 
But the octopuses, they look kind of crappy. I forgot to take care of them for a bit. Not even going to lie. But now they're coming back. So it's all good. All right. We got uh, golden barrels. Um, the golden barrels produce a super good fruit. It's like candy. You know, super amazing. I love it. Um, over here recently, we put a bunch of agaves. Check them out. These are all artichokes. Oh, this is another cool one. You guys. So, torch cactus. This produces another... Um, I, I don't know why all the fruiting cactus to me tastes like, like the majority of them, like a freaking combination of a kiwi and a mango. But once again, this fruit kind of tastes like a kiwi or a mango. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this torch cactus specifically is a... What do they call it? Um... Uh, Sutton Serious Grandiflorus, I think, and uh, it's a hybrid, but I don't know what hybrid it is. But the hybrid it is can take 15 Fahrenheit, and most of the torch cacti take 35. So this one can do really well in the Mojave Desert. Could it already took snow, and then it produces fruit freaking amazing! It already produced fruit, uh, but I ate them. <laughs> so man, the desert's looking good, it's starting to look good. We got more rainwater over here, more chola cacti. This is a couple other agaves that are a little bit older and they've established. This is how they look when they, you know, they get taken care of. All nice spines, chilling, chilling. I'm trying to grow the agave americana, not the tequiliana, by the way, because the tequiliana, like, that's like, like, it'll grow like this big, right? Like, and this big. But then the freaking Americana, man, I've seen some the size of trucks, like legit, like 12 feet high, 20 feet wide, like that, you know, out here, they could do that shit. I got the land for that. So that's, that's what we're trying to let them do. You know, instead of having a six, seven year harvestable agave, we could let those grow 10, 20, whenever the market's right, harvest them. Let's go, you know? Once again, trying to teach you guys those little key business tips. Like, you know, uh, you know, if you're trying to get into agave spirits, shit, there's money for everybody, man. I ain't greedy, you know? Look at that. <whistles> Even if you're trying to be permaculture farmer out in Lancaster. I think I put this shit out because uh, I care about competition. Nah, I care about you guys and girls and whatever your pronouns are. Sorry, you're not trying to be mean or anything. Just... Uh, trying to be quick with the video but um uh, everyone uh i am trying to help you so uh you know sorry if sometimes i sound a little mean or something but just trying to teach you guys the way i can so this agave americana is doing really well out here it needs to be with a bigger pot now you got an espadin over there it died back in the snow last uh last month and now it's coming back so once again i think if i would have tarped it like like there's three types of plants right there's like one like the agave americana it could just take snow heat whatever no tarp i don't give a fuck under tarp grows better but it can grow amazing without nothing right but then there's other stuff you want to put a bucket on and there's other stuff you're going to want to tarp in winter in summer you don't want to just be tarping a bunch of your agaves and cacti and shit, right? So that'll take it in summer, but in the, in the, what do you call it? In the, in the winter, um, you know, you're going to have to heat up those, or, or, or what do you call it? What was I trying to say? Hmm. Forgot. So in the, in the heat, I remember in the heat, uh, you know, your fruit trees, that's all you want to tarp. You don't want to be tarping every single plant you have, right? So, because it's expensive, the shade tarp. So, if you can limit the just summer shading to the fruit trees, then that's cool. In the winter, you know, you can shade a lot more stuff because winter's more crazy. But, you know, that's something I've been doing and learning. So, all this drip line, we're trying to get stuff planted through here. We got this whole section is like a thousand or like, not a thousand, fucking line uh let's see like three four hundred that you know cactus polysaphuses a lot of these were here on the land already too 
but uh like i said most of them came from a 200 acre that was for some reason getting murked and there's still a lot out there but now <laughs> you you know if you want to get one you're gonna have to really fucking try and get your truck stuck and flip it or whatever almost die to get one so it's not easy haven't had one jacked ever since but check out the mexican saguaros put rocks buckets around them this is another one that surprised me let me see homie what is this guy called red yucca red yucca does well out here um and then the goats can eat it dies back it's chill oh is that a phasalia check out the phasalia those little flowers they smell amazing Imagine if the if the super bloom was purple, not yellow out here. Oh man, it'd be crazy. I don't know how I would take out all the yellow and make it purple though. You get me? Like I don't know how to get rid of the unnative stuff. If you got any tips, like you know, I'm a farm consultant. I should know this shit. But like, if you know how to do it, let me know. You know, I need, I need help too. <laughs> we got uh silver cholas, golden cholas. Over there, I got I got to show you that in a separate vid. That shit is fucking just a bunch of uh, new stuff we're working on. Oh, this one is Cylindro Puntia Ramisosa. This one's really cool. We've been propagating some of it. What do they call it? Pencil Chola. Yeah, it's a cool one. Joshua's. Oi, careful, careful. Oh my God, oh my God. No, 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 no. Careful, careful, careful. This one's done amazing. Arizona ash tree. Um, Santa Rosa plum died. Unfortunately, I forgot to water it for a couple months. But that shit does amazing out here. You know, that's why the other things like I've learned a lot of fuck ups, right? And uh, if you don't do the fuck up that I did, that plant would probably live for you. So try to listen to those key things, I guess. <laughs> like, see this one here, right? This was, what was it, what was it, was it, uh, those aloes that, like, just grow kind of, well, I mean, uh, god damn, I forget the name of it, I'll come back to it when I remember, but it's like this aloe that just grows in a bunch, you know, and it, like, oh, foxtail agave, the foxtail agave is if you tarp them, they'll live, but I didn't tarp it, so it didn't live, but once again, learning, all the series with a bucket, amazing they're slow growers so the buckets are perfect for them i'm trying to prioritize more buckets to the little cacti for that reason learning learning um let's see more agaves once again took a little shit some of these you know but it's because i didn't take care of them not on their own got more agaves so everything's coming back now that i am taking care of it but man you know i felt sad for them they're like kids you know you don't take care of them and they fucking go to crap but then you take care of them they become fucking albert einstein you know mm -mm. so yeah just more plants all throughout more agave americanas boulders we can't take out we need an excavator um but you know we sell gravel we sell let me see if i can zoom in on my stone yard over there by the pallet we sell stone we sell that about uh about a pallet that's like two thousand pounds we sell that depending on the client 500 to a thousand if they pick it up um so we try to beat a lot of other clients out look at the stone kind of like you know the niceness of it let me see if we can find one over here that's kind of cool yeah look at this one it's got a lot of like quartz and like shiny rock in it i don't know if it pops up on the video but it's just crazy textures and people really dig them so we've been mining them here from the land by pickaxe in hand and giving them to people so it just is a fucking bitch though you know i need a fucking little excavator man look at this guy oh i think a client already bought this i'm not i don't remember i would offer it to somebody on youtube but well fuck it you know i don't remember man if you want it it's yours <laughs> hey nobody's coming to pick it up right well first come first serve <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, you know, we sell boulders, anything from six inch to twelve inch, gravel bags, super bags, 
All our Home Depot recycling bags from construction, we don't take them back. We just keep them. We bring green waste in them. We bring fucking uh, the gravel in them. We bring everything in them, really. They're fucking amazing recyclable bags, you know? They last forever. These kind of are shitty, to be honest. I, where did I get... These are from Stone Yards, these. They're fucking shitty. But the Home Depot ones are amazing. I don't know what they're built out of. Um, more irrigation we're working on because we're trying to start adding plants over here. We got all the irrigation laid out. We just kind of got to fine-tune a bunch of it. Now I'm back over here. Let's see. Okay, so this other shaded area. Let me see. That one right there. I think I showed you guys that in the last video. That's a Palo Verde. So just giving it some more help. We use pallets recycled from uh, all of our clients. All the stone we bring on. That's how we. Uh, that's what we use for our stone yard and uh, how we move a lot of the rock and stuff. We don't have forklifts, but we just put it on there, so it's like fucking easy access for like the people that buy from us are like other stone yards. So then they'll come with a forklift, load their trucks up and shit. But we don't have any of that. We're we're poor, man. We're trying to get on it. <laughs> Hopefully this year we could buy a little tractor. So I already saved up for it, but I'm looking for the right dealer. So over here, it's looking real nice, real nice. Let's see, have I shown you all that stuff? Oh, let's, let, me, let me go show you the coops. Let me go show you the coopies. Man, look at that rock. <whistles> Fucking amazing, bro. So like a lot of these boulders, I'm gonna build a rock wall around. That's going to be a four foot, no, 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 six foot high, four foot wide. But that will take me years by hand, so I need the tractor for that. That's kind of why the cabin's taking a while, too, because um, I have to mine all the stone, but now I have the stone. So this year, I probably will complete the cabin. It just, it took me, like, like I, I, I finished all my stone in there. You know what I mean? Like, and then it took me fucking... Like, for instance, I had done up to right here, right? And then now I'm building this wall. I got to straighten it out. Now it's straight from up to here to here. And then we got to go up to here make it straight. We got to fucking... You can see here it's nice. And we're trying to build that all the way up. But my point is... 180 fucking tons of stone right there. Over there we have... Fucking... 320 tons of stone. I need 150 more to finish the cabin. But... The point is, holy shit, it would have took me like $300,000 to buy all of that stone if I couldn't mine it. But that's the other thing, right? I just started mining it and people were like, oh, can I get some? And I was like, yeah, fuck it, man. You want to buy it? Like, I buy pallets of stone for like two Gs. So I offer it for a thousand to my homies and other people and it started selling. And then now that's what we do. So need some cheap pallets of stone. Hook your ass up. Come over to the Mojave, load up. If you build ponds, uh, you do landscaping, you do uh, retainer walls, you do uh, fucking anything. You need boulders or stone. Or you're a stonemason like like me. Uh, let's do it, man. I'll do the connection, man. Let's do some deals. So I'm going to try to let out some ducks right now. Show you what's up with the ducks. We got more rain water. This one doesn't collect roof. I was dumb. They didn't put a roof collection on it. But I put a, uh, a gallon or a tote here. These hold 300 gals, and then I could just fill up the kiddie pool for the ducks to play, drink some water and stuff sometimes. So they're in here. Let me show you. They've been kind of bitchy today, so I don't want to let them out today. So I'll teach them to be nice. So check it out. We got the ducks in here. They didn't spill their water nice. Up, oh, they spilled their feed. They're fucking dummy. So then we got the quail caves. We got about 11 quails, like I told you, in the quail caves. You see them going in the back there? The quailies. This is Jefe. He always tries to jump me. Escafecita. That's, uh, some people call him Aflac or Blanquito. Um, that one's got a broken leg. He's been chilling, but he's never really lived well because of that. But, I mean, he's as happy as could be, but it's like, you know, uh, he needs to be outside to fly. Because you can't really run fast. And then those two are Muscovy new ducks. They produce a bunch of eggs. Pretty dope. Um, let's see. What's up in here? I built this out of recycled TGIs from construction. And uh, all this shade tarping was recycled from greenhouses that I took down and stuff. 
And then we got steel mesh on the outside. We got a little rent to them. Fuck, my guts are gonna go in there. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, I'll show you maybe a little bit, a tour of it another time because the goats will fucking wreck the ducks. Over here, we're gonna build a bathroom. Over here, we're gonna build a septic. The septic's like 2,500 from Home Depot. I'm gonna put that in there relatively soon. Uh, I gotta clear all this shit out. Fucking, uh, cause I was gonna build it another way, not gonna build it that way anymore. How I'm gonna build it now is use the Home Depot septic tank, the 2,500 gal, uh, and put it in there. And then, uh, what do you call it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna build my own septic and then uh, fill it all up. That's gonna be the drain lines. And then we're gonna have a little mini bathroom here, but I'm probably gonna rip that shit out. I don't like it. That's the thing, when you build, you gotta finish shit quick, man. Because if you don't, you end up looking at it and you're just like, I don't fucking like it. So like, the more I build, the more I'm better at building. But then the more it takes me to build shit, longer to build shit, because I'm over there like, you know, if I don't if I don't do it in, a, in one go, it's like, oh, I, I should do this, I should do that. So, learning, once again, I just gotta be happy with a result, not the result. So check it out in here. We got chickens. We got goat feeder. No, no, yo, yo, no. You can't go in there. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to fucking just. Do. Let me put the phone in there, but not me. So we got a uh, bunch of chickens. Oh shit, we got some eggs. We got some eggs. Let me see, zoomy, zoomy. Ooh, we got the eggs. Nice. That's another one in there. There was only fucking three in there. In the no, oh. 